Hey, welcome back. So we have Odin, Red Green Odin. And personally, Red Green Odin is a very balanced leader. And being balanced at this point in the meta is not what you want to be. It really isn't, right? We reached a game state where balanced is not the answer. We need broken. We need leader abilities that could be used every turn. Leader abilities that can add 12 cards in your hand. And uh, what do you call it? Give you crazy pumps and blah, blah, blah. And I say all that to say, I don't, I think what this leader needs, because like I said, I believe his play style is, is a, in a sense, outdated, in a sense. It's like it fits an earlier set, like let's say OPO 3, 4 era, right? It's just too straightforward. You play one card per turn, you let your opponent go, then it's your goal, then you probably play another card, maybe make an attack. Then it's your opponent go. You might not play anything. You might decide to attack this turn. Then it's your opponent go. So it's just a lot of uh, decks that are seeing play got just a lot more shenanigans, more aggressive shenanigans. Um, so if they came out with some sort of uh, Wano cards that should be leader locked, that allow you to draw or search in a sense, then I think that fits this leader perfectly and would allow him to contend uh, given what the state of One Piece is becoming, right? We, we just reached a point where it's like, it's like, yeah, I got to just keep doing stuff, do stuff, do stuff, do stuff. And his leader ability does help him be slightly aggressive, but hey, it doesn't mean much anymore. Now it's like resources, resource management. That's, that's what it is. So we don't have anything worth playing from what it seems. So we're just going to swing for nine. So yeah, there, there is the Ryza or Rizo, right? Whatever. Um, but that's like I said, that's like from, from a different era of One Piece. You know, you play him, you got to wait a whole turn. You got to have two characters, one rested. Then you can attack with him, draw one card. Can't save him. So you're probably going to get the one card from him. Otherwise, if you attempt to save him, you're using a resource. And then it's like, it's like you're replacing the, the card's value, essentially. It's like, I may be drawing, but it's costing me the very cards that I'm drawing. So it's hard to mount an advantage with the Rizo card. But yeah, technically that's a card that would help this leader. The route we went, oh, right. Look at that. You see that Odyssey blocker? Okay. The route we went is obviously more leader focused where we want to play our five drops to make sure we have um, power, something sticking on the board and to really be able to use our leader ability as much as possible, because that is important. You know, the, the gone is the times of using the leader ability once in an entire match. Like, I don't know if they're gonna make another leader that's gonna be able to win by using this leader ability once, unless the, unless the cards that support it is very strong. So yes, we play a lot of five drops, but you see the Ezo and the Odyssey blocker, these are character cards that uh, nerf the opponent's power on their turn and I had this idea back for uh, red black sabo but it was more convoluted with that build so when Ezo came out I was like oh this is easier and more consistent so it's defensive the odyssey blocker I think is highly underrated because essentially you can block an attack and then uh, potentially stop a whole nother attack just by using the ability to Reduce something by 2000. So I think it's a completely underrated blocker. Um, granted, board removal, I understand how people might feel like, hey, they could just take it off the board. That's understandable. I get it. But hey, you, you kind of force your opponent to use board removal on it rather than something else if you, you know, glass half full. And because of these two cards, it makes a red rock, red hawk, not red rock, red hawk combo way better. Oh, look, see, we got the card in our hand. So now either we use the Ezo or we use the Odyssey blocker, we could potentially stop two to three attacks, depending on how we man maneuver the shenanigans and um, and have board removal. It's wonderful. Completely wonderful. So right now we do have the ability to just attack the Luffy and make the opponent really spend some resources out their hand. So we're swinging on Luffy for eight. He does have enough cards in hand to protect that Luffy. 
Well, he's thinking about it. Okay, chooses to protect Luffy. We swing for six. No, seven. Ugh, forgive me. We're swinging for seven. Leader ability does give us a pump. We drop our blocker, and it's our opponent's go. Now, we have literally access to two abilities that can essentially help us uh, just stop the opponent from being able to do anything proper. Okay, so we're going to use the Ezo ability. I mean, personally, I would have just went for the blocker, but understandable. We block, I mean, we uh, reduce, and we're going to go straight into the Red Hawk play. Go straight into the Red Hawk play, and we just literally block an attack and took Luffy off the board, stopping a whole nother attack. And now our opponent is befuddled, trying to figure out what in the world just happened. Very interesting, is it not? Yep, making like Red Hawk a two Don card that could not only stop an attack but take a 6k body off the board. Nobody's gonna be ready for that. Like, you know how like crazy it sounds? Alrighty, they got the ace, ace gets rushed. We decide to block out. Okay, so Whitebeard with five cards in hand. A board that visually looks kind of scary until you see what's on the board. Just a bunch of one drops. That's the funny thing. It's like Whitebeard's like a weird Zorro at this point. Just, just could play all these little one drops because the leader is so tanky. So we'll be doing a 10k swing. They take that. And it looks like we're pushing for game here. Swinging for 11. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we got the GG on that one. So yeah, I was, I was going to do a completely different play. But listen, the play that gets you the game is always the better play. All right? Winning is always the better play. I'm thinking of the safe play. Let's let's attack into A's, blah, blah, blah. Let's, no, it was like, why don't we just win? Okay, our white beard opens up with Nami. See, the Odyssey blocker, in my personal opinion, is so underrated, right? And I can understand that people don't want to play it because of board removal. I know board removal discourages a lot of uh, people from playing certain cards. But sometimes you have to look at it as like a glass half full. It's like, well, they they have to have it and they have to use it on this card, you know? So it, in a sense, it's still protecting other cards. But what I like about the Odyssey blocker, which I really wish it saw a play way earlier when, you know, around the time it came out, is because it can potentially stop two attacks. It's like block, uh, reduce, and then it's like, oh, unless you're going to put a bunch of Dawn on this character, essentially preventing you from even playing another card, you might as well just not attack with it. Yeah, I think I personally just find it underrated. Okay, so we get our dingy row out on the board. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's the better play. It's better to just get our leader to 6K rather than trying to just get two little characters off the board. See, that's why I just do the commentary. I'll just be making mistakes. It's like habit and conditionings. I can see you letting that go, but I also can see you saving it. But I don't think Whitebeard's going to play anything anytime soon. Yeah, I don't think Okiku is going to be effective. It's just going to be a bunch of small drops until, yeah, things like a Marco hits the board. Well, that's kind of funny. We can rest the Marco and start swinging on it if we really want to. That's an interesting and funny play. Huh. So we can essentially swing with the Dendro, get two down back, and still go for some sort of summon play. Uh, I approve. Oh. 
We're going to do something else. Why are we swinging so hard? I'm, I'm confused. Maybe setting up for game for next turn, knowing that if Whitebeard takes that, either they're losing a bunch of cards or they take that, there go, they have to draw one and then they'll, they'll be at one life. So maybe that's what that was. Basically reflecting the downside of Whitebeard's ability. <laughs> that, that, that felt like some old school tactic. I remember back in the day, it was like, Rush Whitebeard down, force him to just lose as many cards in hand as possible. I think we get rid of the, uh, yeah, that one. I was about to say, I was like, what just happened? They were deciding that's what happened. Okay, we could develop blocker and then go for board. Both the characters are 6K, so it mimics attacking the um, leader. I do say mimic because um, essentially the white beard can just choose to let those attacks go as opposed to um, losing cards in hand. I mean, hey, the, that character's on the board, so use its ability. It's there, so use it. Yeah, let Denjiro get one. Ooh, look at the efficiency. Wonderful. I I really love Denjiro's uh, ability to oh, to get those uh, two rested dawn back. Man, there's like so many cards that I felt I wish had lots of shine, but it's like the supportive pieces were never enough. I remember um, Great Eruption seeing no play, and I was like, this card is good. I promise you it's good. And then obviously we come across a leader that can abuse it. And then it became a staple for black. Like, so now it's like, it was kind of funny. It didn't matter what the black deck was. You had to play Great Eruption because now people see the crazy value behind it. But granted, the, 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 the meta of One Piece gave more better supporting cards to exploit Great Eruption. So you can't ignore that, right? I'm surprised we ain't play a blocker. That's very interesting. Um. Okay, cool. So, where's my brain at? Where's my brain at? Are they gonna, are they gonna do some sort of shenanigans? Cause I don't. Oh, okay, forget it. I'm like, why are you doing that to the Yamato? But then at the end of the day, it's like, all, all the other characters are active. So, yeah, sure, why not? Yamato, why not Yamato? Anyway, they're gonna attack the Denjiro. Very destructive ability. We can't. We could save it, but it would just take a lot out of us. Yeah. We have to deal with two more swings. We, I, hey, I think chucking the blocker is good. And if they want to... We probably have to take one life no matter what. Oh, no. We got a 2K counter in our hand. I mean, yeah. We got a 2K counter. That's better, yeah. Because then I don't think White Bear plays blockers. And we can play the blocker next turn as a precaution in the event that it's like not safe. I could see us taking this one, but. Yeah, and they're leaving two down up. So it kind of tells us. Yeah, okay, we took it. It kind of tells us there might be a, um, you know, some sort of defensive event in hand. So yeah, yeah, so that's the great eruption thing, right? Um, I can't wait to see like a lot of old cars that always had strong abilities. Like I, I just wish Bandai Namco, blah, blah, blah. Just, I always say Bandai Namco, just Bandai, right? Anyway, I always wish um, they just don't be afraid and just say, here you go. Here's the support you needed. Ah, and then we could just see very old leaders just be way more playable, viable. But I don't know what they can do for a, like the original King leader or for Yuta in terms of like supportive cards for them. Like you'd have to give purple a, a whole, uh, not a whole different engine, but like a way stronger power reduction engine or some sort of benefit. So purple will have to mimic red a little bit more in order to make the King leader better. 
But anyway, let's let's get back to it. You know what? Wait, wait, wait. Just one more thing before. Let's let's do like a petition. Let's do a petition for like the dookiest leaders that we never even got to play, basically. And then just be like, give them super busted support. So we can find I know you I know there's probably a few people with Z alternate art leader cards and just like can't even use them. Like, come on now. Like let, let's have that fun. We need EBO2 to just release some toxic leader lock support. Super leader lock, mind you. Support. Oh my god, what about that shank starter deck? Like, ugh, right? Film shanks. Come on now. Come on. All right, okay. So we are attacking this white beard and he is defending himself. So we could just attack the Marco or is it more effective? I feel like because of the events, you know what it is? It's more effective. Yeah, it's, it's, it's probably more effective to attack um, the leader because even if they playing an event, depending on how much we're adding in terms of power, we can essentially just uh, force them to play more cards. Whereas attacking the Marco just leads into um, them dropping the one event by itself. So now we got two blockers, one life, and we have two attackers. They got two attacks essentially, unless they got a rush ace. And if they got rush ace, that's too much Don. That's seven Don down, three Don to play with. There's not much they can do with a combination of our leader ability and Ezo. Yep, I, I respectfully. A G, a G. We are the low tier deck builders here at Level Grinding. Please give us likes and comments and a subscribe to truly help us through our endeavors.